In this video, we will build a flowchart for the given problem statement. That is, you are given a single positive integer n. You need to print all the prime numbers that occurs in the range from 1 to n, where 1 and n both are inclusive. As we all know, prime numbers are the numbers which are divisible by 1 and itself, such as 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, etc. Additionally, we also know that 1 is not a prime number nor composite. Let's consider an example where n is equals to 10. So here, our program must print all the prime numbers between 1 and 10, including 1 and 10. That is 2, 3, 5 and 7. Now let's begin to construct a flowchart. Initially, let's create a starting terminator to indicate the beginning of the program. Now, accept an integer from the user and store it in variable n using an input component. Here, n indicates the user provided upper limit. Furthermore, we will create a new variable named current and assign it with 2 as 2 is the smallest prime number. Next, a decision box is implemented to check whether current is less than or equals to n or not. If not, that means the variable current has exceeded our upper limit which is n and hence we will terminate the program through the end terminator. But if the condition in the decision box is true, that is if current is less than or equals to n, then again a new variable is declared and the value 2 is assigned to it via a process box. Let's say i is equals to 2. Moreover, again a decision box is implemented to check whether i is less than current or not. If i is not less than current, that means current is not divisible by any other number except 1 and itself. Hence, the number current is prime. Thus, the variable current is printed with an output component. In addition, current is incremented by 1. Also, a loop is created before the first decision box such that the decision box verifies the value of current for each iteration. But if the condition in the decision box is true, that is, if i is less than current, then again a decision box is implemented to determine whether current modulo i is equals to 0 or not. If the condition is true, that means current is not prime. Thus, we will increment current by 1 and add a loop before the first decision box such that it will re-verify if current is less than or equals to n or not for each iteration. But if the condition is false, that is, if current modulo i is not equals to 0, then we will simply increment i by 1 using a process box. In addition, again add a loop before the second decision box so that it will check if i is less than current or not for each iteration. To deeply analyze the flowchart, let's dry run. Consider n is equals to 4. At first, the value of current will be 2. As 2 is less than or equals to 4, the condition in the first decision box is true. Since the condition is true, i is also initialized with 2. Here, 2 is not less than 2. Therefore, the condition in the second decision box is false. Hence, current which is 2 is printed. Also, current is incremented to 3. Again, 3 is less than or equals to 4. Hence, the condition in the first decision box is true. Also, i which is 2 is less than 3. That means, the condition inside the second decision box is also true. Furthermore, 3 modulo 2 is not equals to 0. Thus, the condition in the last decision box is false and hence i is incremented to 3. Now here, 
थ्री इज नॉट लेस देन थ्री दस द सेकेंड डिसीजन बॉक्स इज फॉल्स हेंस थ्री इज प्रिंटेड एंड करंट इज इंक्रीमेंटेड टू फोर एज फोर इज लेस देन और इक्वल्स टू फोर दस द कंडीशन इन साइड द फर्स्ट डिसीजन बॉक्स इज अगेन ट्रू एडिशनली टू इज लेस देन करंट विच इज फोर दस द सेकेंड डिसीजन बॉक्स इज ऑल्सो ट्रू मोर ओवर फोर मॉड्यूलो टू इज इक्वल्स टू जीरो दस करंट इज इंक्रीमेंटेड टू फाइव एंड अगेन सेंड टूवर्ड्स द फर्स्ट डिसीजन बॉक्स एट दिस पॉइंट फाइव इज नॉट लेस देन और इक्वल्स टू एन विच इज फोर दस द कंडीशन इन साइड द फर्स्ट डिसीजन बॉक्स बिकम्स फॉल्स एंड द प्रोग्राम इज टर्मिनेटेड थैंक यू